explore it, make my oratory torrid when I preach on the devil and the communists. Let me pace across the stage like a silk suited animal in a cage. Make me a televangelist. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. I'm Matt Dillon. We have this week, a, a theist, I believe, from actually from out of town. So it's Harley in Toronto. Harley, are you with us? Yeah. Hi. Hey, welcome. Thanks for waiting. You're on the air. Thank you. Okay. How are you doing? Uh, good. Yeah, I'm just going to take my headset off because I'm watching it on the computer and it's a bit delayed. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> uh... All right, so I just want to make a response to what the last caller was saying, and then I can get into my point. Okay. Yeah, okay, keep it he short, was, please. He <laughs> was saying that uh, we were, like, taking response, or, like, taking stuff to protect ourselves from hell and vampires. I'd just like to say there are many theists out there who are extreme, but for every extreme person, there are unextremes. So I just thought you might want to think about that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we know that not every believer in whatever okay. ideology they believe is is a radical. We know we we're, we're aware of that. His, yes. his larger All point, right. Right. his larger point on some level was that those of you who aren't extreme are still uh, providing cover and for the irrational beliefs of those who are extreme, and that your beliefs are no more supported than theirs are. But I'll let you get your, to your point. Right. Well, I don't believe in like Noah's Ark and stuff like that, and. I have a bit of trouble believing that Jesus uh, resurrected, but you say that he never even walked, and there are... No, I didn't say that. No, no, no. No, I didn't. No. I've never said that. As a matter of fact, I've corrected the same stupid point about 53,000 times. Yeah. There what are said, atheists who take that view, but uh, Matt and I are not among them. What I've said is that there is insufficient evidence to support that he actually did exist. I'm not saying he didn't. What I'm talking about is when you try to determine whether or not somebody existed, you have to take an assessment of what you know about them. And when you build this character story, for example, George Washington, we think everything that we've heard about George Washington, we try to find out what, what of it's true. And when it, there's a good chunk of it that's true, we can say, you know what, this person most likely probably existed, although there's one or two things like the I chopped down a cherry tree, I cannot tell a lie story, that are pretty much mythical, and we throw that out and say that probably didn't happen. In the case of Jesus, there is not a single contemporary account from an eyewitness witness. There is not a single uh, event from his life that we can accurately date or provide any evidence for. And all of the accounts um, are uh, done a, a generation later or more. They are hearsay by non-eyewitnesses. And the accounts of his life, the events he try to identify, are almost all of a supernatural nature. They, can, they, they have no verification. That's what I've said. I've, I've said repeatedly, there may very well have been, as a matter of fact, I think it's likely that there may have been some itinerant Jewish rabbi or, or teacher named Yeshua around that period of time that is essentially the core of the story. But what, we, what the Bible records uh, of his life and words and deeds, there's nothing, no evidence to say that that is reliable. Yeah. Do you understand the distinction there? Yeah. But okay. I believe in an episode back you were saying that he was a legend. Uh, yeah, I thought, I thought that that meant. Well, that let, let me give you a, an, an, an example of, of how these things can develop from a you know if you're going back to antiquity, right? Uh, you ought to read some uh, books dating back to that period. Some of the histories uh, of the Roman Empire, for example. A really entertaining book is called The Twelve Caesars by a writer named Suetonius, who uh, essentially wrote this collection of biographies of the first 12 uh, Roman emperors from Augustus onward, not only is it a ter terrific, very entertaining book to read, but what you will find in his histories is that because of the mentality and the beliefs that were common among even intellectuals of his day, he will report on things like omens, okay, and uh, divine visitations or signs, what have you. And these will be taken seriously, and these were taken seriously by people of their day. For example, Roman generals uh, and the emperors, people leading the troops into battle. Stories would circulate among you know, the, the legionnaires and, and the centurions about oh, how you know, a hawk came down from the sky and circled the general's head three times and you know, took a poop on his helmet and this signifies whatever, or they would read the entrails of a goat. This kind of stuff was taken seriously back then. Curses were taken seriously. Uh, divinations were taken seriously. And he incorporates 
a lot of this supernatural content into what is, for the most part, a very straightforward history of the first 12 Roman emperors. Now, it doesn't mean that these, now, these days, we pretty much are fairly confident these kinds of supernatural occurrences don't really exist. But when you have a, a culture that is seeped in those kinds of beliefs, this kind of boundary between fantasy, reality, what have you, blurs. And so it is no wonder that a similar story or set of stories might emerge from a figure uh, like Jesus, uh, a, a, an itinerant Jewish rabbi who developed a following, became something of a rabble rouser, a thorn in Rome's side, as it were. Uh, and from that point on, the legend kind of develops. So it's not to say that the character, the person himself, Jesus Christ or Yeshua, or whatever his original name is, was not a historical person in any way, shape, or form. But what it means is, like a lot of the stories that were circulating about Roman generals and emperors and other famous people of the day, the reality of his, his life got mingled in with myth and legendary, and people would just build the stories and build upon them, and that's essentially what happens. Uh, all, so, all that aside, and, and I'll let you get back to whatever you were saying, all that aside, it, the, the specific case that you're talking about, I was referencing C.S. Lewis's argument that uh, the, the, the Lewis trilemma, that Jesus is either liar, lunatic, or Lord. And my only point was that he left off another L option, which is legend. It's there as an option. I didn't say which one I necessarily accept. I think I lean more towards lunatic. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I believe you have just defeated me. Cool. I'll be back. <laughs> have a well, nice day. Feel free to call back anytime you, you have something else. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of areas where we disagree, and, and you know, but I'm glad, I'm glad at least we cleared it up that you're not sitting there thinking that I'm asserting that, you know, Jesus never existed. I'm not doing that, and I'm not saying there absolutely is no God and I know this. I wouldn't say that. What I'd say is there's probably not a God. I see no evidence for one, and until somebody gives me reason to, I'm not believing. Yeah. Well, just as long as you don't completely disrespect me, and I'll see you. Thanks, yeah. Charlie. Take care. Appreciate it. Of course we don't disrespect me. Just don't, don't happen to agree. And anybody who's amazing how that works. Yeah. Make me flashy, make me florid, make my oratory toy.